These are some of the things that nobody talks about out in the financial press unless they have some amazing article that's super clickbaity that they can say the reason this one went down was because of the way they drifted. Hello and welcome to Your Business, Your Wealth. My name is Paul Adams. I'm your co-host and CEO and founder of Sound Financial Group. I'm joined today by Corey. Everybody would love to be stuck on quarantine with his cooking, Shepard. I'm so glad you could be with me here today. I understand next week I'm going to be unsupervised. Uh, no, we're just not recording next week. I'm on vacation and we're both on vacation from recording next week that's that's the deal hey jordan just just get here next week okay (laughs) he doesn't know that i've got a plan for snagging all of his laptop batteries before (laughs) poor jordan he never did anything to you he's just helping us out (laughs) yeah i know all right you are right i am the the person probably voted most uh most wanted to quarantine with on the block i would i would say well both least and most least because my wife goes to the hospital near every day and we're probably the highest risk people on the block to yeah. bring corona in if we weren't staying strictly apart but you know we're got nothing to do but hang out at the house so i got to smoke a nice brisket for 12 hours yesterday there are some upsides to not having anywhere to go <laughs> and those are upsides for my tummy so, <laughs> that's that is good yeah. so Corey, you this has been an issue near and dear to your heart the idea that the standards of Porsche 500 is not quite what people might believe that it is. And you went to a conference earlier this year where this was kind of a, a topic and you brought back this article. Yeah. So, you know, first and foremost, the media latches on to the S&P 500 as a stand in for the market as a, as a whole. And when we talk about broad swings of the markets up or the markets down, what they're really talking about in most cases is an index like the S and P or the or the Dow, but most often the S and P five hundred, and people will think, oh well, five hundred big companies in the United States—that's a pretty wide berth. But it really is a lot narrower than people think, and even more so over the last ten years. So, uh, Paul, this article that we found is talking about the MAGA stocks. Now, this is not. <laughs> This is not putting on any bright red hats. We're talking about Microsoft, Amazon, Google, and Apple. And Paul, if you want to scroll down, I'll let, since you're moving the article, I'll let you t- yeah, point perfect. to things to talk about. It. Yeah. So, so what we can see here is you have in this article, you've got Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, now Google, and, or Google, now Alphabet, and Amazon. And you can see the total contribution to return is 12.38% of the return of the Standards & Poor's 500 over the last 10 years. Now, we have a little bit, you can, maybe you're a fan of the current president and you're mega, 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 or maybe you're mega F and you just don't like, (laughs) you give it an F. But if that's the case, we just add Facebook. (laughs) And so Facebook (laughs) is another contribution return of 0.93%. So over this window of time, and keep in mind, for a portion of the last 10 years, these companies were not so big that they dominated the Standards & Poor's 500. These companies are actually more likely to drive the return in the future because they're much more heavily weighted today than they were even over the last 10 years. And that's super important to think about because every time we see the S&P 500 on TV, They point to it as the market is up or the market is down. My own personal opinion, but watch for it. You will see how often they point to whatever index has the greatest amount of volatility to keep you through the next commercial break. Mm. Now, Corey, you did some other checking on current weighting, right? Well, just if we just do the math in our our heads, (laughs) five stocks out of 500 is 1% of all the stocks in that index, never mind the weightings. And the point is, is that nothing should be too greatly weighted over anything else if we're thinking we have 500 stocks and we're widely diversified. So we would hope that it's a fairly even 
mix of all those, but 1%, five out of 500, 1% of the stocks are responsible for 12 and a half percent of the return over the last 10 years. That's just wild. That's wildly concentrated. And that's why we call in our episode, the best tech fund that you never knew you own because S and P 500 has largely been a tech fund for the last 10 years. Well, and, and to go further, that also means 1% of the stocks make up about 19% of the allocation or mm -hmm. said differently, the other 495 positions in the S and P 500 are 89% of the portfolio. So it's like you, most of your money is not in the other 495 stocks. It, right. It's not spread out evenly among them or even close. They all have a weighting and it does not rebalance. So one thing we talk about in volatile times in the market is that the market goes up and down and not every market moves simultaneously. Small cap moves differently than large cap. International stocks move differently than domestic stocks. And as a result, we're going to periodically rebalance the portfolio and you get the benefit of one selling after it's gained traction in your portfolio and being sold and buying something that hasn't done as well, which brings them both back up and rebalances. Well, the S&P 500, each time they reconstitute, it says, here is the new index. This is the way we're going to do it. And there is a little bit of lead time to the traders in the marketplace that can get ahead of that small impact on the S&P 500, much larger impact on some other indexes. Now, Corey, I just want to kind of jump to when people think about the Standard & Poor's 500, they've got a pretty good idea of it. They know that it reconstitutes, meaning they come out and say, here's what's in the S&P 500, here's what's coming out. But what a lot of people don't realize, and you've probably heard this before of like, you know, management creep or scope creep in your career, but there's also a type of creep that occurs with index funds that we refer to as drift. And I've got a little visual I want to share with all of you on this. And it's it's really kind of astounding how much things change inside of a span of even six months inside of an index portfolio. So here's just a visual look. And thank you to Dimensional Funds for putting this together. Here is your current index list, whatever basket of securities that they say, here's what's going to be in the index. But just six months later, a bunch of stocks no longer qualify for whatever criteria the index has. And then when they reconstitute, they must sell all those positions and repurchase the ones below. Now, we've talked a little bit in past episodes about reconstitution cost. The problem being that these securities in the box must be purchased and the ones outside of the box must be sold after the drift has occurred. And I love comparing it to something like the, you know, right before the 2008 mortgage crisis when everybody wanted to buy a house. Like what happens when everyone wants to buy the same things all at the same time? Yep. And people get it real quick and, and mean it's like, oh, you're paying more than you would have otherwise. So that reconstitution cost is a major inefficiency and drag on on these published indexes because everybody's buying and selling the same list of stocks in that really short compressed amount of time. Well, and, and another kind of easy example that we can all notice is imagine if you said, hey, I want to get a, and by the way, for those of you that are huge car fans, if I say anything wrong about a Corvette, my apologies <laughs> in advance. But I want a Z71 Corvette. I want it with the track package. It needs to be red and a convertible. And I need it to be a 2017. That's your criteria. Oh, by the way, I need it tomorrow. You don't get much price flexibility in what you're going to pay for that car. But if instead you said, I've got some time, I'm going to make my selection appropriately. All I my, I care about is it needs to be a two-seater. It needs to be a sports car with over 300 horsepower. And uh, I need to have the ability to either have it come with the track package that I want or 
be able to install it after I get the car. That's an example of you being able to pay fair market price for that vehicle that you couldn't do if you like, I got to buy it tomorrow. And that's what indexes have to do when they reconstitute. We'll go into that deeper in another episode. We've done it in the past a little bit, but this is the part that affects the drift. This is an example of the reconstitution impact yeah. on something like the Russell 2000 index, largely small cap US stocks. And so here's the small cap companies that are in the bottom 10% of market capitalization. So that would be like a great example of a small cap index. And what you can see is that when they reconstitute, they're at nearly 100% small cap. But then what happens to some of these small cap companies? They get bigger. They no longer qualify as small cap companies. Does the index immediately adjust? No. Next year, the index readjusts. They get back up to 100% small cap. And what amazes me as I see this is I have a quick count, roughly seven out of 10 years, it's a pretty steep drop. Like immediately, yes. things start change. It's not like a slow level. It's just bam, early in the year, you're already way out of, out of whack. Yeah, so just, we, a great example would be we think we have 10% of our portfolio or 15% of our portfolio in small cap. And because we own the index, it's drifting from the minute we grab it because nobody is going in and looking at it consistently. We're not a fan of active management, but we are a fan of making sure that the asset classes we think we own are also the asset classes that we actually own. And you can see that happen year after year where it starts out at 100%, it drops to 90. It goes back up to 100%, it goes back down to 85. And this happens year after year after year. We own any particular index, is it just has drift and we probably don't know it. We may or may not even find out about when it reconstitutes, but our entire portfolio is drifting throughout the year for all indexes. Not bad. I would much rather have people index investing than chasing around active managers. Right. No question. But these are some of the things that nobody talks about out in the financial press unless they have some amazing article that's super clickbaity that they can say the reason this one went down was because of the way they drifted. So with that, you want to take us to commercial, Mr. Shepard? Yeah, we've we've talked about the surprise tech fund you never knew you owned. And when we come back from commercial, we'll talk about what we can do with this new knowledge to make the most positive impact in your portfolios and your balance sheet. So stay with us. Paul Adams here at Sound Financial Group. Are you curious what you can accomplish with our help? You're here enjoying the show. Our philosophy is helping you increase your effectiveness with money, and now we have a way to help you take another step on your financial journey. We have designed a financial inquiry call for you and the thousands of other listeners of Your Business, Your Wealth. This is a complimentary 15-minute conversation where one of our team members will ask you some key questions. Understand your concerns, and if appropriate, schedule a time for further conversation with an advisor. If you look at the episode description, you'll see a link to schedule a call at a time that's least invasive for you. And even if now's not the right time for us to work together, we'll point you toward resources to help you in your financial journey. We always look forward to connecting with our listeners, and we look forward to talking with you soon. And welcome back to Your Business, Your Wealth, and our episode on the best tech fund you never knew you owned, aka the S&P 500, over the last 10 years. So, Paul, let's give folks some idea of what they can do with this new knowledge and how they can actually benefit from what we've unveiled and integrate this into their strategy and their balance sheet. Well, one of the first things I would encourage everyone listening to do is when you see people talk about the the market on TV. Just be centered on the fact that what they're showing you is a part of the market. Now, whether they're using the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ, some European index, the Nikkei, or the Standard & Poor's 500, any of them, it is a segment of an academically allocated, globally diversified portfolio. Not the entire thing. So what the market does in one particular index 
is not indicative in, indicative <laughs> of what your portfolio is doing. But it's addictive to watch those stories and watch it move up and down. But I love that reminder that there's, I mean, there's many markets and there's the overall marketplace as a whole, but your portfolio is always some subset of that will always be different to some degree than whatever they're showing on that news channel because they don't know what your exact portfolio is. And more importantly, I would even throw out you as a listener, if you're not a client of ours, it might be the same. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, but if you have an academically allocated, globally diversified portfolio, your portfolio is not the same as any particular index that they're touting on the news to keep us through the next commercial break. So what you can do is A, what we're doing something right now, uh, you know, we're still in the midst of COVID-19 as we record this. This won't release for a few weeks, but I think we're going to keep doing this for a few months. Not only here at Sound Financial Group do we have a CEO that hasn't gotten a haircut and therefore I'm not trimming my beard because otherwise the hair is going to look extra long if I shorten the beard. Well, you've got so, a president that hasn't gotten a haircut either. My wife <laughs> said, hey, I can cut your hair. And I said, great, if I can cut yours. And that ended the conversation really fast. <laughs> well, so in this case, the other thing that we're doing in the midst of COVID-19, because we've actually brought on some new staff, we have some additional resource, is if you're just worried about your portfolio, you're worried about whether or not it can rebound with the rest of the market, then we're actually waiving our usual $500 upfront portfolio review fee. Now, this is not our full-scale coaching. This is not our wealth design build process. This is meant specifically for people who are worried about what's going on in the market, would like to be able to find out if they're properly allocated in their 401k to be able to do that. Reach out to us at info at sfgwa.com and we will walk you through sending us the statements and being able to give you what we refer to as gap oh, analysis. Jordan's putting the link in our show notes so they can just schedule a 15 minute call to get that process started and talk about even better any questions before they get a longer meeting. That's perfect. Yeah, and, and, and I think what we want that to do is just to reassure people we don't have a truckload of hand sanitizer, a bunch of masks that we can send out. So we're just helping where we can, along with bringing you quality content like this podcast every week to two weeks, depending on when we get a chance to drop a new recording out. That having been said, what a lot of people sit with is, so we that portfolio review free and we'll even send you the allocation models so that you can implement wherever your investments are now, whether it's 401k and IRA, et cetera. But what many people listening may think about is like, gosh, but it's going to cost me something to have an advisor. And especially if you do much reading on the topic, it's like, well, the advisory fees and mutual fund fees totally erode your return. And I think it can, especially if that advisor isn't value added. But let me share something that Corey was kind enough to build as one of the things we do is we just are somewhat relentless in making sure that we're constantly checking ourselves that our strategies work. And one thing we've worked to do is have our portfolios have the tilts, as for those of you that have watched the Illusions of Investing series, the tilts towards small cap, value, and more profitable companies. And then we figured, well, we just want to get that extra little bit of return that comes from the tilting the portfolio that way to be able to alleviate the cost of having had an advisor. And so this is us going back to 2002, Corey? Uh, yeah, 2002. And uh, this is this is me putting on my Paul Adams hat. This is much more common of a thing for you to go tinker with and say, Corey, look what I discovered. So I was very proud to, <laughs> to have a moment with these. So we we have the S&P 500 in here, and you can see it's that kind of darker bluish line to compare that wild ride that it's been on with some of these other portfolios, uh, DFA, Sound Financial Group, 8020, uh, sound financial group 6040, just in case that's the risk level that you're more inclined to uh, be invested in. And the Vanguard 8020 target portfolio as a comparison. So that's a, you know, Vanguard is the industry, you know, stallion of low cost, Indeed. low fees. And so we use that as a stand in for someone doing as really as well as they could do on their own 
without an advisor because that's how Vanguard is, is set up. And one of the things, Paul, I'm, I'm glad that you asked me to add the S&P 500 to this because you just see at the end the wild takeoff that it that it went on. It was lagging a couple of these portfolios, especially the 80-20s for a lot of years of this timeline. And then just in the last few is where it took off. In, and uh, it's in, just it's astounding to see. Well, and, and here's the, the main point that I wanted to make and bring this up is that if you had an 80-20, no cost, no advisor, or if you had Sound Financial Group, exact same 80% equities, 20% fixed income, but instead of all indexing the way Vanguard does that, instead it's being done with an academically allocated, globally diversified portfolio, both of them being regularly rebalanced. And what you find is it's basically the same return. It's basically the same return over 20 years. Now, what you can do with this, and I can't encourage anyone listening enough, if you're not currently working with an advisor with Sound Financial Group, you can reach out to us, or you just need to find an advisor who's gonna act like a coach rather than a financial product salesperson. And I say that with all the empathy in the world, because that's where Corey and I both started in our careers was on that yeah. path of financial product sales. So I don't don't mean to admonish anybody, but think about this timeline. We just were able to go through that over 20 years, one of the lowest cost portfolios that you could have possibly been in, that you would have held strategy like perfectly, like you never had to be talked off a cliff. You basically put your money in and you kept adding money and you never looked at it, you never freaked out, you never had the Maalox moment, and you held strategy all the way for 18 years. And if you did that, you would have been in basically the same spot as somebody who had about $3 million invested, we took our full freight on fees, and your portfolio would have been slightly above where the no-load portfolio would have been. But what else might have happened? And this is the beauty of having a coach. Mm -hmm. Do you think a coach might have helped you enter into maybe your first real estate investment and really understand how to go about doing that instead of you know just kind of hoping, praying, and going to escrow? Second thing is, what about something as simple as a backdoor Roth or the ability to be strategic in different income years and converting your traditional 401k to Roth 401k? Or saving money on payroll taxes when an owner and their spouse are both on the company payroll, which is a really common area that we we help business owners. Like the rates of return of those things are not what are showing up on this page, but they're things that you could control 100%, unlike the market, which we can't tell you what that's going to do in any given year. Exactly right. So the, the idea being is that there are these external returns to working with a coach. There's the ability for a coach to maybe have you position your money into a better place for your emergency fund. And we can go down the list all the way to, we had a, a client that's coming on board with us now and they're in the midst of a refi. And I said, well, what caused you to have to do the refi? They're like, we've been listening to your podcast. We've been reading your books. Like we realize that we've ignored some of this stuff and they're starting to get into some of the strategies before ever engaging us. And that's what we hope for all of you. Each time we do these recordings, I want you to know that Corey and I have a whole conversation about what this is gonna mean or how valuable it will be to you. And then we back to how do we best communicate that? So something you can do that will help all the people that have not yet had a chance to hear about our show is give us a review. All you gotta do is go into iTunes, Switcher, wherever you download your podcasts, and simply do a review. When you get something useful from this podcast, it's super easy. Just hit the share button on your podcast app and post it to your social media. Give people one or two sentences of what you took away. And the reason that is key is we literally have clients today who have gone through this incredibly volatile market cycle, but they were able to do it with confidence because they knew they had a strategy that they had thought through with a coach and implemented. And when you do that review, when you share it on social media, you have the opportunity to make a tremendous difference for somebody that you may never meet. And we've got countless examples of this. I was thinking about a gentleman that started working with us two and a half years ago. And it was a year before that, 
that he had seen a post of one of our early podcast episodes, saved it, waited a year, and then reached out to us. Now, I would highly encourage all of you to not wait a year. But what I do want to encourage all of you to do is to take the time, if it's not us, it should be somebody else that you fully disclose, you open your financial kimono to, and you get some real advice and coaching about how best to move with your money. You work too hard in your career to just let it languish on a balance sheet where it's not being paid attention to. You can reach out to us and we'll have that initial conversation with you. In the show notes is the link where you can go right to and schedule with Corey and be able to really have that initial conversation to see if there's a fit. And if nothing else, in this time, just think accurately. Just make sure that what you're doing or the emotions you feel or the concern about the virus, the concern about the economy, don't let it run away with you. We hear about this being unprecedented times, but the unprecedented things that happen in unprecedented times are not one-sided. They're incredible good that come out of things, no matter how hard they are, and there are things that are unprecedented levels of good that can come from these things that we don't fully understand. I want to encourage all of you to focus on that. Corey, anything else that you want to make sure that we send everybody off with today? Just that uh, a reminder that we want to support you and and sharing with other folks. So whether it's a review on iTunes or a share to your social media, you take a screenshot of either one of those with a few words that you've you've written and send it to us at info at sfgwa.com. And we'd love to send you copy of my book, a copy of Paul's book or uh, clockwork by Michael McCallowitz. So that'll just be our little thank you for any kind of honest review or, or share to get this out there. Right on. Thank you, Corey. And thank you to all of you. And we hope that this has been a contribution to you being able to design and build a good life. Hey guys, so glad you could tune in and watch that video. I want to remind you to subscribe, be sure to hit the notification bell so you can get the latest piece of financial knowledge we release. And don't forget, go to Amazon, get a copy of Sound Financial Advice. Why? Because it'll make you better looking and smarter.